All right. That didn't take very long, a couple hours. <laughs> so what's it like to be on the other side of the camera? Definitely not as comfortable as being on the back side of the camera. I hate it. <laughs> I know you did. Thank you so much for doing it, you guys. Really, really appreciate it. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Good I found. What you got there? Wow. You remember the this? Meisler module, yeah. Meisler module. Good to see you, man. Good to see you too, man. Weather. Awesome. Sorry for interrupting. No, as we'll talk we about to... this later, I'm sure. I love it. I think it's great. So which which one is that compared to the red one? Uh, What's in the line? Two we're gonna... or three. Later. This is three in because we had the yeah. MX, remember? We had the yeah. MX. Okay. The MX is fun, what we finally got yeah. this guy with. Yeah. So we started with, okay. With I think K. we, yeah. yes. I think we met Fincher first, though, with the red one. Yeah. And he rejected it very nice. Well, not so nicely, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went, the, I don't know what he was doing, but. Uh, Zodiac. Zodiac. And, Zodiac. And yeah. Benjamin yep. Buttons. Yep, yep, yep. And the, the Viper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He used the viper. It was scary, wasn't it? it? It was terrifying because you you looked at Raw and you you kind of had to put a look on later, and you, it was really like a backwards way of trying to make aesthetically beautiful films. You know, it was really kind of technically challenging. And I, <laughs> what he and Claudio and Harris achieved in those movies is pretty remarkable in the end. On top of which, you know, he had to break studios formulas. You know, they were all nervous about this and if I'm gonna give you 80 million dollars to make a movie the next time there's a solar flare is it gonna evaporate you know and so they did a lot of like uh, old three stripe preservation techniques to to, to you know and and printouts to make sure that those movies uh, would last later but that was the beginning of the evolution and and he uh, along with with Soderbergh kind of got the studios in a position where they had accepted this new technology and, and, and the risk f factor was mitigated. Yeah, that was, and it was good for us because I remember, um, and I don't know if you came down to Lake Forest that I did. second trip and I was sitting on the back parking lot and, and you guys were telling me all the bad things <laughs> about the Viper and it was like, so you have to do this, this, and I'm sitting there and we just had the MX and we're like, this is going to get him. This is going to get him. He's going to like this one. Sensor, new sensor. And he's like, so you have to do all these things. I was like, shit, we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do oh. that. We can't. But at the end, he's like, oh, and we have this, this rowboat scene in, you know, in, what was it? Yeah. In Boston. Boston. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so you have to make the camera two pounds lighter. <laughs> and to him, that was, I think, the hardest ask. And I kind of looked at them and I was like, oh my God, that's the one thing we can do. Because our machinist, Dave Ellicott, who's this incredibly talented, best machinist still to this date that I've ever met. Um, remember, there's only a handful of us that read at that time. But he was making carbon fiber motorcycle parts. So I, was, so I took all the the camera we made for you guys. I took it all apart, weighed each part. I was like, fuck, this top lid is just a big chunk of metal. Matt Tremblay, who's a, another savant, um, designed, thinned it out, made the shape for Dave Veliquette. Veliquette modeled up this um, carbon fiber and it was a matter of days. And I think I called you first and I was like, okay, I've got the carbon fiber camera. And you're like, wait, what? That quick. Really and, I, and I was like, you know, of all of your big list, <laughs> this is the only thing I can do. But it was like, okay. But two things happened in that. That was that one, it happened so quickly. Uh, and two, that you worked hand in hand with us and you, uh, you accom accommodated the filmmakers, which is so many companies are so uh, rigid and you have to work around that and come up with your own solutions to problems. Whereas, you know, right off the bat, Fincher and I were were all in, and 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 Steve, who who was uh, assistant on on social network, that we got all the help we could possibly want, and that was the beginning yeah. of my relationship with Red. Yeah. You started sooner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
with Che. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. We kind of jumped out of the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's like the whole bag of peas issue. Yeah. That we're talking about. Well, that was insane because that. Where did you shoot? Spain. We shot in the, Spain. In the jungle, though. In the, sh in the jungle, I we. I can't remember what it was called. In uh, right outside in Toledo, we actually Toledo, yes. we shot the final battle scene first of the second movie. Right. Because they all the actors had to grow their beards, and they we and so instead we shot the second movie first. Okay. And because they grew the beards down to here, that they we and they had to cut it as we went on. So we shot the second movie backwards, and okay. so we ended the first. The first thing we're shooting is the big battle sequence where Shay gets killed. I'm sorry to ruin the movie. No, no, no. Scene. I didn't know what was happening. Yeah. But um, I think we know what happened. That's we're in this. We're in a hundred, hundred degree weather in in, in mountain. We had like hiked down into the mountains of, of, outside of Spain for Bolivia. It was supposed to be for oh. Bolivia. Yeah. And we had, you know, it was the beginning of this these this cameras that that we and with no back no backup uh, exactly yeah Soderbergh. Such big balls! Oh my God! This I kept on saying, guy. I said, get a, get a Panavision camera. Can you have one? It was Panavision we camera. told you do one. Jim even distance. said, "Hey, we'll buy a Sony 950 or whatever it was at that time. We'll buy it, just put it in the back of the truck and take it, just in case. You know, we don't these. That that was the first first, like first after the Peter Jackson thing. Mm -hmm. That was it. And we're like, wait, what? what? And so it was like, no, I'm yeah. not taking any backup. But he says in that interview, like the direct line between capture and editing, the creativity and hands on. But, but it's also his, it was Steven's great attitude of we're going to have the patience for this camera and we're going to we're going to really whatever it is to do, yeah. we're going to make it work and work hand in hand. And, and every, you know, it was because of, of you and Jim and it was just a couple of a couple other people that were oh. really helping us. Yeah, Good that tools. added like 20 years on Dean and <laughs> Yeah. But it was like day by day. Had you ever had a manufacturer that worked day by day, hour by hour? Oh, we were just so excited. Oh my God. I mean, talk about luck. Like we got these two, like yeah. as our first, yeah. I mean, legends, 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 legends. And so we were just siphoning it all in because we really, I, I say this all the time, but we really had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> so you guys kind of carved the way for everybody else. So every customer should thank you guys a little bit well, we to this day because you, I mean. But it's like Jeff was saying, it's the, it, it, it's because you guys were so accommodating and, and we were really, it was a collaboration. It was something that we were really working with you and Jim, Jim's passion, his passion mm -hmm. for uh, that of like, we were going to make this work. I, I like would, I remember mm -hmm. having a conversation at two, like I, I had got home and it was like two in the morning in LA and waking and I was calling your phone and Jim yep. answered it and I had to like I, I had this you know like what's what we, we need this help or we need something that, to do this but just the, the response and, and you guys just were doing everything you can to really help support us. Oh, we which, were literally sleeping under our, in the warehouse in yeah. Irvine. We were sleeping under our desks. Well, I like it that was the, insane. The prototypes um, were missing the seal around the sensor, so. Oh, there was a few things on the oh, yeah. prototypes that, that were... Yeah. You know, the fix, there would be dust on Dean it. and Yvonne had to clean spider webs out of the inside of the camera yeah. every night, and you with the dirt in the... The sensor, I would, I would be banging a screwdriver on the on the on the thing, tapping it to find it, like sensor, find yeah. it, to, to find it. I, I see it was like an etch a sketch. It was like it, it, there's there's not I have to find a part where there was always going to be a little dust in it. But I just had to like, okay, what can we do yeah. to blend this in? And there was, or, or it's not going to be bad. And hopefully, I mean, the right thing would have been to be on a clinical sound stage somewhere with perfect environment. But you guys, no. put it to the extreme. The worst like, possible. Yeah. I mean, it's, and also we were shooting in Spain, and and our, our just our camera truck was a was this cube truck, and everyone's like smoking cigarettes coming around it. And we we're like, I'm trying to like, I had to finally like say, okay, we can't smoke while we're cleaning the cameras. Yeah, we it's like doctors I, it, in the 50s smoking and this. It, yeah. it, it just was the most unclean environment, and we couldn't do. We were like, it, it, I just crossing my fingers, and again, a lot that. of cigar smoke in those. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm Brazil. No, we couldn't. We didn't have playback, so we really didn't. We no. were out. We were just Blind. on a limb. There was no playback. We're, we're just crossing our fingers that we got this, the, the shots that we were getting. But at the end of the day, could you look at it? Did, at the end of the day, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, and still the same Which thing. Which is pretty fast in those at days. At the end of the day, he still, Stephen, we were, we were staying at this house right near this, and, and he would be editing at, the, at night yeah. the, the footage. So we know we're, we're getting it by at the end of the day. And still that, that thing of edit being able to color and edit and have the, the origins of Red Cine and to be able to to start that to to me was another yeah. thing that that red has done. that was such a i remember because i'd yeah. go and visit and at night um and he'd be editing and it was like cool he's editing like who does that but for us it was oh my god we can see and make sure that nothing screwed up like for us it was a nice security yeah. check which you couldn't really do before that um before obviously not on film you couldn't do it away. so for us with the prototypes it's kind of like oh geez you know this is incredible that this director shoots all day and then goes and edits all night because oh shit you know something happened here you can go shoot it before there wasn't any sets to strike, but and he doesn't know. speak Spanish. So he was <laughs> oh, editing. He had no idea what he was editing. He said he just ed edits by with music with it, and if it fits. But, but then again, that's how they used to make movies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, 70, 80 years of classic films that we all grew up loving. You know, imagine Rackovers where you didn't actually get to see what was in yeah. the viewfinder. It was a parallax yeah. finder. Yeah. Uh, and so <laughs> dailies became another thing, you know, and it was processed that night, so you didn't see it till the next day. Yeah, yeah the onus was really put on the camera operator. The camera Completely. operator was uh, it's to like the director was saying to the camera operator, What did you think you have it? So it's up to the right. camera operator to say, Okay, I think we got it. That's right. Well, what did you shoot Fight Club on? Yeah. Uh, we shot on Panavision. Panavision? Yeah. Wow. 35 millimeters? Yeah. I remember when, you know, when we when it was Jeff, Fincher brought Jeff on to um, Social Network and Jim's favorite movie was Blade Runner, his dad. For me, it was like Fight Club. <laughs> so we had like, holy shit, we got, you know, both of our kind of heroes. Um, oh my God, like this is such a big moment for us. And, you know, and I don't know the whole like, you know, there's a father son dynamic that you have a lot of times the son lives in the shadow of the father sure. and your father was a fucking icon. But right. you've, and no disrespect to him, but you've overshadowed him by everything you've done. I mean, every film that you've shot, it just is amazing. So you're being very generous. But <laughs> no, it's. Um, I mean, you just look at your look at your reel. So I was just like, holy shit! Like you look at, and I tell people still to this day, social network, because people are like, oh, should I buy the Raven, a used Raven, or oh my god, I saw this red one for sale for right. two thousand yeah. dollars in the back alley somewhere, <laughs> and I'm just like, go watch social network. You know, that was shot on a red one. That's red one. I right. mean, you can take that camera today mm -hmm. and go shoot something that looks what incredible. What year was that? Uh, 2010, a red one with the Mysterio MX yeah, chip. Yeah, with the MX, yeah. Okay. I, I, I wanted to say that with my dad, but to that point, um, the, the takeaway for me that was I was the most proud of at the end of Social Network, obviously it got nominated, which is not, yeah. people will never be uh, sad about that, uh, but that the, they would constantly ask me what it was shot on. And to me, we won the fight right yep. there. Right. Yep. If yep. you yep. can't tell me what I did that on, then I won, we won collectively yep. uh, the battle. And so um, th that to me stands out as the most, the biggest accomplishment of that film, you know, yeah. and, and that came directly from these guys. Those were actually Soderbergh's cameras that you had upgraded, you yep. know, it was uh, yep, 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 yep. We, uh, Paul and John. Took all the spiders out of them. Right? Changed the, oh, yeah. I mean, we're jumping all over the place. <laughs> the bag of peace thing, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. you, the <laughs> we had, we, I kept getting, I was stuck in here, I think my passport or something. And I, and I kept getting calls like the cameras are overheating, the cameras are overheating. We're like, oh Jesus, what are we gonna do? And you guys were putting bags of peas on them. And we're like talking to the engineers like, there's nothing wrong. Like they'd look at the log files and it's like, there's nothing wrong with the actual cameras. <clears throat> the sensor's not overheating. And we just sat because again, we didn't know what we we're doing. 
we thought like 70 degrees Celsius was way too hot for anything. <laughs> so when that happens, shut it off. Electronics can go up to 90, 100, no yeah. problem and kind of be okay with it. Um, so it was just a, like a little firmware setting. But we did. I don't think we figured that out until the. No, I, I, actually, I remember so a I was weeks googling. Ago. I honestly was googling uh, of 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 ice packs for dogs because of this trap. They, like it, right. for smaller dog, like a small dog is like a size of a Datsun, so it would strap underneath. So I, I knew that that smart. was the way to keep it under the camera. So you, did you have two was cameras? Yes. You swap, so you just swap it out. Yeah, I mean. It was, it was at times where it was so hot, and because of uh, because of the sensor sensitivity, yeah. that we would be okay. Uh, cameras off. Yeah. We're gonna about to roll. Turn the camera on right before we roll. Shoot it. Turn it back down. Turn it back off. It, it was it really was such yeah. a collaborative. It's just like we were all working to the same kind of. Well, yeah. Like, what, what were the things that made you really take the turn towards, say, helium and and like the newer sensors and. Well, there's a form factor. The sensor evolution is kind of predictable. It's the form factor, like nice segue, um, to, you know, and I remember our very first prototype before the Red One, way back when Jim was just thinking about this at uh, Oakley still, I actually have it next door, the very first like mock-up that Matt Tremblay did as a little like Oakley designer. Oh. And it looked very much more like the Scarlet, the first 3K Scarlet, but okay. very much in this form factor. But everybody said it's impossible to make that. You can't fit the electronics in a 4K, forget about it. Right. Um, you know, because there was like the Dalso, which was this big and everything, all the other electronic cameras. Yeah. Literally that big. Um, so Literally we, that was, was kind crazy. of the target from the beginning was, the Red One was the smallest digital camera on the planet, kind of, uh, definitely 4K. And so our plan was just to reduce, reduce and then we went to the modular approach, which is kind of divided all up into little pieces, which was awesome when you needed something really small. But then that added its own, you have to have these modules and they stacked up. So Meisler, and this is the Meisler module. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this guy. I like that um, it's written on this. This was <laughs> kind of taking everything back and putting it back into one unit, but but still being able to take the camera off and use it as this little thing and building a whole bunch of wireless into it with the minimal cable as possible. And this was Meisler's kind of, should have had that. <laughs> well, <laughs> was trying, had it was that. getting all the, you know, it's, you know, my history also coming from an AC, you're always, I was always adding GAC on the camera, always the thing in, in, in cameras became, uh, become very unwieldy because of all the A big cables Medusa and all these things and, and it's hard to work with. And that was the whole thing of trying to have no cables on that. And that got so to this the point was brilliant where you just had, the cam you had, it, had it coming through the front. Yep had it through the monitor and the battery, and that was the only cables coming out, and you could do wireless HD and, 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 and pull remotely. And it, it, it's not so different that, than what Panavision did when nope. <laughs> that, they... Nope. This, no, that's, this, this is, that's kind of if the... If you put it, it the first happen. Panavision, which was Fincher's camera, the first Fincher camera, which is your guys' camera, because you both worked with yeah. Fincher, um, the first kind of, this is the blueprint basically for Fincher's camera. Yeah, we, that we had, a lot to, uh, had a lot of input on that. Absolutely. In it's so interesting because Fincher and Soderberg, again, being our, we got so lucky with them being our first two um, all-stars because Fincher's really technical. Yeah. Soderberg doesn't really give a fuck. Like the mo one of the most, Fincher's he wants giving it to be me a small. lot of- he wants to just, Steven wants it to be small. Oh. It was always about size. The, one of the best, yeah. best moments, or I guess motivations, um, I went to, I think you were shooting Haywire or something, and I went to, to the DI, and the window was blown out, completely blown out. And I was like, Stephen, why don't you, why don't you just stop down, you know, just stop down and don't. And it was his, the informant. His, oh, it was the informant. And, I, and his oh, answer okay. was, <laughs> yeah. he was like, I don't care. You got to make your, if you want, if you don't want that window to blow up, you got to work on your sensor. <laughs> And I, uh -huh. and I tell you that like shook me. I was like, holy shit, he's right. Like why 
our whole plan, you know, and that was a big motivation to be respectful to film was, you, with shooting film, you kind of didn't have to think about anything. I mean, you did, but you didn't have to think about all the shit that all of a sudden you had to when you were shooting digital. So that that one comment was like, holy shit, like it's our job to make all these problems go away. Not like, hey, you gotta help us out here and don't shoot, you know, blowing out windows because that's not how he's talking. He's like, I don't care if the windows, I don't really care if the windows are blown out. You don't like it, fix your sensor. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, that was so like, I'm telling you, that was like, and I went right to the engine, this, our sensor team the, the next yeah. day and I was like, we need an extra two stops. And we got it. I mean, that's yeah. instant that's information. What, that's, the, I, that's what happened. To, yeah. it, oh, it was just, around. it was just monumental. But, you know, back to Fincher, technical guy, the DXL, that was all you guys and Fincher. It really was. The DXL, it was this one, and I've got this, I should have brought them all out, but I've got the next one after this, which was all integrated that Fincher actually said, no, too many cables still. We don't yeah. like, cause we realize we don't need all these ports. Once you have the wireless and all the stuff that you guys put into it, you don't need all of them. So it's like, no, at that m very moment in time, Panavision finally started being friendly to us. They had a leadership change and the guy came over and like, oh, you know, we're having a hard time making our camera. And I'm like, we can make, look at this camera. And they're like, oh my God, how long to, you know? And they're like, oh, you know, a couple months. He's like, oh my God. And that was the, that was the foundation of the DXL. And then you look at our Ranger, you know? So this, like when I say you guys are responsible that everybody that yeah. likes red should thank you, it really is because you can see the evolution and it really comes back to just such a small group, which is so yeah. cool. Yeah. I have a funny story about that. I was I was doing a show in Canada and, um, and I was using a DXL at Panavision and I had called Michael Sione to talk about settings and the color science. And I go, I really, really like this. And he starts laughing, he goes, well, it's from Social Network. You should like it. <laughs> it's like, okay, there I go. <laughs> Stepping in myself again, you know. <laughs> it's really great, though. Really, really is. I mean, we, again, we just learned so much from that, from Shay. Um, you know, the whole, not just from a technical side, but working, you know, with you guys. And again, and then, you know, you were the best. You were, you worked for Spielberg and Fincher, and, and these aren't, yeah. these are demanding directors. Yeah. Um, Soderbergh, Fincher, you know, these guys, both of you, you know, you don't, you can't just cruise through that. You have to be the best of the best. And then Meisler, and I remember this, and I was so proud, I almost cried, because <laughs> you came, you came here and we were watching something, um, that you were you were just shooting and you're like, I'm gonna make the move to DP. And I know Soderbergh was really encouraging of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, that's a scary move to go from, you know, the top, nice. like the best AC, first AC probably on the planet. And I'm not just saying that, I mean, you know, yeah. anybody will say. I concur. Yeah, the <laughs> top, top of your industry and you're still a young guy to say, I'm going to be a DP and yep. you kind of have to start over. And yeah. fuck you extended, you went to, this, you know, down here, then you went, you know, boom, boom, boom. I think it was the girl, not, right uh, not the, not the girl. What was girlfriend the first experience. girlfriend experience? Mm -hmm. that, well, I that, shot, I, I shot a feature first for Richard, Richard the Gravenace, yes. a yes. musical for the last five years. Yeah. And girlfriend okay. experience. And then, boom, I mean, that wasn't that long ago. It's still good. And, it's watching, yeah. You know, Queen's Gambit and I mean, holy. Well, Godless. Godless. Got nominated oh, yeah. for Godless. Emmy. Godless. Godless. I then you won the Emmy on Queen's Gambit. But again, sorry, I, I, if I didn't have you guys, if I didn't have Steven, if I didn't have Jeff, all these people who, who really gave me an, enough confidence, this is like the confidence to, to do it and to, I, I would never have done it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not the I'm not the guy who's like the you know the DP who has all the the you know the I don't know who can sell themselves very easily. I know it's a sort of thing I, I but I 
Yeah, but it's, it's your. Been a thanks I mean, of all these people to talent. support me. But now you work prestige, so yeah. it's easier. <laughs> it's a, it's just the talent, then it's and you're probably also not only you at that time, especially weren't at the top, but you're also one of the nicest guys. I mean, you're one. There's a lot of assholes in this industry, <laughs> but you're also one of the kindest um, as well, which is a weird combination. But it's the images. I remember we had Ted Sarandis over here. Um, of Netflix and and it was me and Fincher and somebody else and we were trying to explain to him how big, you know, how 8K and big yeah. and 4K, you know, but and we we played your show, Godless. We played it on, we brought the projector in, stage one. We had a hundred foot screen kind of set up. And it was, you know, we played that right. show and it's like and he looked and it's like, wow. And it's like, people don't realize how important what you guys contribute, not just to your own kind of craft, but the whole ecosystem to the business of, of production. the business, you know, and it yep. propels everything forward. And, you know, every, especially digital, you know, you're selling digital and trying to convince people still, especially way back when you guys did it. It wasn't us. I mean, if 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 it was if we just made the cameras and it was like cool and we showed cats running around and stuff, people would be like, "Oh, that's <laughs> kind of cool," you know. Uh, if it wasn't for guys like you and guys like Soderbergh and Fincher that embraced it, because there was a lot of directors that embraced it, but the team didn't, you know. Yeah. The the cinematographer and the ACs are like. Or they this. struggled with it. Well, yeah. we still have misnomers out there. We of still course, that'll with... always happen. Yeah, that will always I think, happen. I think it takes a village, and we found one here, and that's why he and I still come back and feel like we're part of the family. You know, it really and, is like a family. And Queen's Gambit, it doesn't get better than that. That, that, that was stunning. Thank you. It's the uh, just incredible. I have some like anecdotal funny things like. You know, the, the overheating thing, which I know aggravated everybody and, <laughs> and certain people exploited it. Yep. And it was only years later that, like, the consensus was that it was just simply set too low, that yep. there was yep. never an issue. It, it, it was a self-inflicted wound, yep. you yep. know. Yep. Um, but along with that came the fans all the time, yep. right, yep. Uh, trying to cool a sensor down that wasn't actually overheating. And uh, I was prepping a movie and we were doing tests and the sound man actually went to the producers and said he wanted to use a different camera. And I was like, <laughs> okay, let's listen to this conversation. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because he was worried about how loud this sure. was. And in, in his experience, it would wreck his sound. So we did a test and we're shooting other things along with everything else. And then he got his mic and he's like, oh, I'm going to prove it right now. And I'm like, great. I unplugged the camera and we shot the test and he goes, see, this is the noise I'm talking about. And I said, you're not gonna bring this up again. You're done, wow. we're shooting on red, you're full of shit. Oh, wow. I didn't, I've never heard that story. That's yeah. awesome. Either. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, well done. It wasn't gonna happen anyways, because I'm not gonna be told by somebody about what I'm shooting with, but you know, I wanted to, you know, it's a, movies are long and you wanna get along with everybody and you're all trying to make a, a good product at the end. So I went through the, through the exercise, and um, I won. Yeah, but that—that's that, well, that's, art of that's exact right point there, though. Yeah. It's so easy just to, and that's why we're so grateful. Is it's so easy just to say because there was a lot of stuff wrong with the cameras, like the, I mean, the overheating. We didn't know until well past the, the shoot was over and done. You easily could have said, "Cameras overheating," you know. Let's shoot film or shoot something yeah. else, you know, let's forget this. That would have been the easier thing to do. Yeah. And that's, you know, we will never forget that kind of stuff because you guys saying, hey, we're in this together. And hey, you know, looking up dog cooling thing and finding solutions <laughs> to the problem that nobody ever, nobody watching the movie ever will know. And nobody, most people, you know, in the process don't even know that's what, that's why when, you know, f still Fincher or Solberg come to me and they're like, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Yeah. You know, can we make a custom this or that? That's really all I want to do because that 
kind of family thing. It's like, yeah, you know, this is this is what it's all about. And it's what companies like way back in the day, one of my first experiences um, in the industry and way up in Vancouver when I lived in Canada, I'd walk into Panavision and there was a little mach there was a glass window in a machine shop and you know they would you'd go in there and I need a bracket and the, there'd be an old I'm guy so there and he would just mill it out of you know yeah. on the old bridge port he would just mill it out and there you go and I thought wow that's the coolest fucking thing yeah. in the world Never. and that got lost along the way somewhere I mean all that you put a hundred million dollars ten million dollars a billion dollars into the production of a movie and it kind of comes down to you guys for the visual part of it of course everybody else does their thing too but it kind of stops at that. So you kind of have to get it right. That's why being a DP, the AC, oh my, being a first AC, fucking the worst job in the world because yes. that pressure to <laughs> yeah. get shit in focus perfectly, along with babysitting everything around the camera, the pressure, I mean, Jesus, it's insane. It really is insane. It's appreciated, but it's thankless because you only hear your name when it's wrong. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's that's so true. Well, that's so true. Well, are there anything that like what's missing now? What do you want? You got Jared right here. We should do a collaboration. Good <laughs> Something more out of focus. We yep, that's coming. What? That's already coming. More out of focus, so you don't have to. I feel bad for all these other assistants who, who you know, <laughs> yeah. are, are like it, it's it is it, it's a really. I mean, I. Yeah. I don't, I, I think the, the greatest thing so far in the last year is the internal indies. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was. That's a game changer yeah. for me because so oftentimes you're the sun setting or you're away from everything and you want to make an adjustment, but you're kind of handicapped with yeah. not having your whole case of filters and all that stuff. And yeah. now you can make those arbitrary decisions on the fly. And, Again, you guys were instru the, our first swing with the motion mount. You guys were okay. a big part of that. The motion mount was our first kind of, it was an electronic ND that we put on it and the color would go all haywire. It was really a bad execution of it. Um, but, you know, the, that it took us again to, to now and, it, and it's a difficult thing to do, the mechanics of it and then getting, you know, not only the color to match or not to drift, but then camera to camera because you're putting sensor and then a piece, this piece of glass that you have to calibrate together. It took us so long to actually get it right. And now that we have it, it's embarrassing that we didn't have it a long time ago, but you know, we, now we do. What was the balance? Like, what were you, were you losing something when you? Well, the first with the motion mount, when you don't have um, a clear piece of glass and you just have the electronic ND, then you have you can do it a couple ways. Mechanically, you just have like three different settings, you know, a three, a six, a nine, or whatever combination, and it spins and or slides into place. But then you're limited, and you end up having to bring NDs anyways if you want to get in between. Yeah. With the motion mount, which we did, um, you could dial it in from, you know a little bit of ND to a lot of ND, but even off, you'd you'd lose, you know, half a stop at least, um, just because the clear wasn't that clear. So on the XL, it's actually a combination of both. So it's a, it's a clear piece of glass, and then it's an electronic ND that actually mechanically slides. So if you don't want anything, you're not losing light from just having it sitting it's there. It's important. Got it. Yeah. So it's, we're pretty proud of it. It's, yeah. you know, we, te we did the test with all the best neutral NDs and we, we come pretty great in color drift, um, especially color temperature. And then it's just dealing with all that there's optical, you know, there's optical consequences too, because you have two pieces of glass there. So okay. it's, it's a lot more work than people think, but, yeah. um, you know, it's cool. But then it's like, okay, what do we do next? An autofocus, you know, we have the intelligence in the in the Raptor now where we can actually have intelligence to what focus stuff that, you know, still cameras do all like still cameras, you can face track and all that stuff. We can now do that on Raptor. It's getting that done. You know, these all these other companies have had twenty years doing this. We're just 
kind of learning to know. Yeah, I really, really like where it's got where the red camera has gone with low light. I, I, yeah. I really, it's come that that's too. come a really long way and a really beautiful, you know, um, something that's that's really. Would you just use Raptor on Beanie Bubble? Yes. Yeah. And so, did you use low light? I mean. Absolutely, not yeah. completely not. You know, it, it, it's it's something where again in the first iterations of the camera, there were you know it, it, the blue channel is always yeah. was was it was tricky, you know. And it's same thing, it's still having that issues with social yeah. network and it, 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 of that, um, and you got to kind of stay away from that. And and it was tricky, but now it's, I mean, it's so got clean it. and, and the blacks are so black and it's it's a really beautiful. It's such a I'm not afraid to to go there. Well, that's it's just nice. such a really fantastic thing. It really, I mean, that's... That's yeah, a big difference. Kind of, Being able to that confidence thing. sounds pretty cool. And you have the frame rates, too, the with frame Raptor. Rates, yeah. That was the other thing on the list. And, of course, with Komodo and the global shutter, which, yeah. again, falls back to you guys, because on um, Dragon Tattoo, the flat... Remember the scene with the flat, with the camera flashes and yeah. the split line? Yeah. Right. What was that all about? I don't. Rolling shutter. Yeah. So everybody thinks uh -huh. about oh. everybody thinks about the global shutter for actions, which and which is great and explosions and all that stuff. But really, the moment we thought, "Oh, we have to fix this," was that one scene um, in Dragon Tattoo when there was a bunch of paparazzi, paparazzi taking yep. pictures, and Fincher started yelling, "Like, why is there splits in my frame?" Because rolling shutter is the the light um is out of speed so you so the rolling shutter will only capture half and by the time it captures the other half the flash is already gone so you'd get these slices yeah and you'd see all of it or half of it or a little slice of it or none of it not at all and again fincher yelling fincher yelling is the impetus of so much of <laughs> our cameras it really is because you don't you don't realize when you have a hundred people standing around and there's a problem with the camera or the camera's not doing something, you just want to fix it. You have to fix it because yeah. everybody's depending on it. Um, so that was another, you know, the, at that moment it was like, how do we fix that? Oh, global shutter, global shutter will fix that. And it's like, okay, great. You know, and all this stuff kind of comes together and again leads back to you guys kind of being the trailblazers especially something simple that you take for granted like you, we didn't know that was going to happen until yep. until it did happen and ah. then we tried all kinds of solves where we old vivitar flash units yep. because they had a longer decay yep. on the flash <laughs> and the longer you can keep the flash That's interesting. going the more chance you have of actually capturing it yeah but beyond our movie you know if you're doing a western or something like that. If you miss gunshots, it's hard to have bad guys fall down when the gun never shot in the first place. <laughs> it's kind of a story killer there. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so, and it, it, or throw the dynamite and all you see is smoke, but no flash afterwards. So those things all become relevant in storytelling as well. Yeah. And I mean, in, in combination of fixes that, and then of course now with LEDs, you can make a flash yeah. and have it decay for 15 seconds if you want to. So yep, yep. so kind of technology caught up with each other at the same time, but yeah. But there's always something else. Oh, I mean, there's something. always something else. And that's yeah. what, that's what you know, and your team, Nada's team and Brian's team is so critical to being there and being connected to you guys every day that, you know, that you guys are shooting because we love to hear all the good stuff and like, oh, wow, look how great this looks. It's so beautiful. But it's the bad stuff that really we need. I mean, we really, really need to hear because that's how we move forward. And that's sure. how, you know. Well, and it helps. How, val how valuable Red User was and how val yeah. valuable that was to really see it. You really saw that was all mm -hmm. mix of good and bad and you're seeing it, but that's yeah. so invaluable. And oh, so absolutely. And it was those early days. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Red user and DVX user, which Red user kind of started on. Yeah. You know, that was before Facebook and before, mm -hmm. that was before YouTube. Like I started that website. It was like it's a little crazy. user forum. And so many people were just like, especially with the Red yeah. One when we started, it's like my camera blew up and my camera started on fire and my camera won't turn on and da 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 da. But you get all of it. You get you all get of the thing. Everything. You the, can do it. You, oh, you, you know, absolutely. You can, you can really... But that's how we learn. And all our engineers are reading this every day. And it's just this treasure trove of not 
obviously everybody can't be on set watching this stuff yeah. go sideways. So you have this, and then you have somebody in Canada like, oh my God, my, when it gets this temperature, it's too cold, yeah. or somebody in the desert, oh my yeah. God, this happened. You I like that you call them, the, that it the was lab. a bomb squad that really yeah. took yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that, you're right, that like that community yeah. of, and people venting, the venting, all the people like, oh, we love you, and this is great, that's awesome, we love that, but it's the people that venting and are like, but that's My the other thing, that, that's where, again, the comparisons to the other companies is that the other companies don't want to hear that. And no. they don't want to hear the, the bad things. They don't want to, they're, they're not, they, and, and you're, you're so open to listening to what the problems are. So you really can, it, it can be a collaborative process. Not to mention people had solutions for things. Yeah. yeah. Or, they, or they had yeah. figured out like, yeah. well, you did this because this happened. I did it myself. Yep. That's why that happened. And yep. 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 So you listen to it. those conversations and everyone's being educated at the same time. Oh, yeah. absolutely. and. You know, and that, and and you are so good. Like this guy is so calm, but when he's mad, and I've only seen you mad a few times, <laughs> he doesn't yell and scream at you. You know, he's not that kind of guy. But you can just feel like he's probably just got yelled at. So then he's kind of thin, and you're like, you don't want anything more than to fix your problem. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, you know, oh Jesus. Funny. Well, we, we learned also from the wildlife filmmakers way out, you know, in the Sahara and the heat heat and in the Arctic. So they really push it as well and give us feedback, which has been really nice as well. When COVID came and we were testing, you know, we had the prototypes of Raptor and we we're testing that. And I was, I just got a place in Big Sur and I was out shooting that, the prototypes every night that those Wow, those foxes, we had foxes that just kind of came. Yeah. The fo we had yeah. these like pet foxes, not really pets, but uh, I was shooting foxes and so learned so much from just being outside and and the time and the pre-record and a whole bunch that the autofocus stuff you were talking about mm -hmm. a lot of that because i had to i had cam traps and all these things like why can't we do motion detection and why sure. can't we know when the fox comes because i'm sitting there for eight hours <laughs> waiting for the fox to come and i'm kind of <laughs> bored about it yeah <laughs> so you know it's all of these little weird things that um segments of the industry that yeah. f all fall back these little foxes there's a lot of stuff for filmmakers in the Raptor that wouldn't have never been there because, you oh, know. that's cool. Yeah, you know, why would it be? You know? Yep. All right. So. Um, well, what's what's next for you guys? Can you say? Uh, I have a, a thing I shot last year called White House Plumbers. That's Can't wait to see that. Out hopefully in January. That's a limited yeah. series on HBO Max? HBO, yes. Um, very, I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? What are you uh, I'm to? prepping a Miles Teller and a Taylor Joy film right now um, that shoots next year, provided everything goes. Brand new information to me is right. sprinting from my chair and writing it down as fast as possible, <laughs> but I won't. Very exciting. <laughs> Scott Scott Derrickson is directing it, and so uh, that and shooting commercials, you know, of course. My brother and I direct together, so that's been good. So that, that was that's yeah. what I was going to say. I wasn't sure if I should though, but it's nice. that next step for you in directing, because you're fucking great at directing commercials, especially with your brother. But is there an ambition there to take that? I love collaboration, which is why I love this relationship with yeah. you guys here. Um, and that's my favorite part about it, you know, being on set and solving problems and, and hearing an idea and trying to make that idea better and somehow incorporating it back into the story because oftentimes people get sidetracked from the story, but that's always got to be the driving force. Um, I think I'd like to do it with him, my brother. You know, if we got an opportunity to direct a film, we'd do it together. He's a very clever, smart storytelling guy and a, and a good writer. So I think I would do it in that context. Otherwise, I, I, I love shooting. I really do. And uh, I love working with talented directors and, and contributing to that. Yeah. I and you do, he's really good at contributing. <laughs> I don't want to name the projects, but I've seen a few times where you're kind of kind of directing the movie when the director kind of not checks out, but is kind of focused on something else. 
you've mm -hmm. kind of shifted into that. Yeah, like it felt like though with Mark on Tales from the Loop, you were able to, when we talked about that in our interview, you talked a lot like a director. When you walk through the scenes, which I thought was really interesting, it wasn't, it was very different than a technical aspect of it. You're like, well, this is what's happening and this is why. It always comes back to story, whether it's cinematography or directing or it's story. Or story is number one. Production design or anything, really. Not and are you yeah. going to do that? Are you going to go? It's not, first of all, it's not fair that you went from your AC to director wasn't painful enough for you. It was, it should have been. You had to have a few years of misery in there. Oh, totally. <laughs> no, totally, it was. Dude, it was, you went from oh, top of the world AC to bottom whoosh. Yeah, oh, yeah, your bottom was it's like. A quick dip. Yeah, it's a quick dip to, <laughs> now I'm on top of the world again like as a, a DP. No time. pressure. Uh, if the right thing came, if the right thing came, I think I, I, I'd be interested. I'd be open to it. But I, but, I, but like Jeff, I, I, I love shooting too. Uh, but, but from an aspirational standpoint, like speaking out to people that might be watching this, when I was a young DP, all I was obsessed with was the photography yeah. mm -hmm. and composition. And it yeah. took years and years and years of, of doing it before I actually found a voice in telling the stories from another perspective, yeah, for right. everybody's perspective, you know, collectively, because not only does that make you a better cinematographer when you're, in, when you take into consider wardrobe and production design and everything yeah. else, but but most importantly, the director and, and, and what, what that script wants to be. And if you can add layers to that, then you're then you're really contributing. And, and, and that's what I feel like I've gotten better at through experience. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. And that's such a I mean, such a great opportunity because both of you have worked with yeah. the best directors on the planet, but you learn, take pieces yeah. from that. Even just as a shooter, I mean, like, cause I shoot and I love going to set and watching, being able to watch you guys work and then realizing all oh, these, these other parts, you know, the gaffers, you know, a big part of the EP is the relationship with the gaffer. Sure. And when I started out, I really didn't know how important mm -hmm. that was. And it's like, wow, it's just really start talking to gaffers more. And you know, you learn all this stuff, but then you get to see how different everybody is. Yeah. And you learn from that, so I it's that, cool. I think that's one of the most exciting things I find as a cinematographer is the, when I am reading a script and there is an idea, I'm reading something and, and I can see it as a, as a technical shot in my head and you see the shot and you plan, you go through it, you go through, you're dealing with not just, you're dealing with location manager, locations and location managers, which is such a big part. And you're yeah. dealing, all of a sudden, all these people you're going through and then you, like you said, the gaffers, the dolly grip, the, yeah. the, 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 fur, the camera, there, all these people, and all of a sudden you're they're there, and you're doing the shot, and you it, it is this it's it's what you had in mind, it's what your image, and for that when when you can get it and it right it's right, and it's like 50 people or 100 whatever can contribute to it, it is is like no other feeling. Pretty much That's it. Great. That's so exciting. Yeah. I well, love it, guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for doing the yeah. ad campaign, the original gangsters. Appreciate it. Jared. <laughs> yes, thank you. Pleasure. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. you yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, and, uh, thanks. Thank you for the relationship, for sure, man. Yeah. I keep on ticking. A lot to go.